Hello guys and welcome to another YouTube video. In this video we will be overclocking the GTX 1060 3GB which is this ASUS card right here which requires one 6 pin connector to power it up. So we'll be overclocking it, see how we can push it using um, MS Afterburner. Alright let's get to it. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and install uh, MSI Afterburner. A link will be in the description below to download MSI Afterburner. And this is what we'll be using to overclock the GTX 1060 3GB. Right, what I like to do before I even overclock is benchmark at least 3 to 4 games. So I will be benchmarking Valley, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider and Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition. What this allows me to do is get the stock FPS um, so that when we do overclock we'll see an improvement. So I will fast forward the benchmarks but show you the results of the benchmarks. Alright let's get into this. Just let all you guys know all the benchmarks I'm about to show right now are the stock values. I will let you know when we do the ones that are overclock values. So all these benchmarks are just the stack on the 1060 3 gigabyte. So now we've got all the results of those benchmarks, and these are the results. So in Valley we've got 59.5, whereas at Tomb Raider we've got 55.29, Tomb Raider we've got an 87.1, and Sleeping Dogs we've got a 50.4. Now we're going to try and overclock and see what results we get better than that. So like I say, uh, MSI after burner link will be in the description to download it. You install it, you'll get this. First thing I want you guys to do is just go to settings and unlock the voltage control. I click OK. I have never broke a GPU in MS Afterburner. I don't even think it's possible. Right. So to begin with, I want you guys to put core voltage up to 100 and power limit up to the max. Now this may be different on if you've got a different reference um, 1060. So like if you've got a, I don't know, a different EVGA or MSI or, uh, there's, there's loads, but like I said, generally they're all the same, but you might be able to get 
more of a power limit on other cards. So I'll just put that up to max. Put your temp limit up to 92. Now you'll never ever reach 92 degrees as long as your your fan curves and whatnot are within reason. Right. So this is the fan speed under here. And just I'll just leave this because you don't need to touch it because as a card gets harder it'll do its own thing and cool it down. Like I said, I've overclocked tons of cards in the past and um, the only problem I've ever had with heat is when the SLI and I've got four together because the heat gets trapped. But if the card on it is on its own, you're not going to have a problem with heat, even when overclocked, in my own experience. Right. So we need to try and find out now the overclocks for the core and the memory, or what we can achieve by overclocking the memory and the, and the core clock. So we're going to use another program called Valley Benchmark. Again, a link will be in the description below. And what I'm going to do is set everything to Ultra. Now we want MSI to burn up while we're um, tinkering with the um, settings. So you want to uncheck the full screen and just click Run. Now you're going to get this. Now there's sound playing, if that annoys you, you just click on the sound tab up here and that'll, the sound will go away. Alright, so uh, just press the start key on your keyboard and go to MSI Afterburner. Now what I recommend doing is going up in 50s, so like 50 and then 50 here, click apply. Watch it for about 5 minutes. Everything's good. I don't know, 50. I know the uh, limits of this card, this is why. I know this is perfectly fine. But like I said, your card might be different, but it's the same process. Just follow the same process and you'll be good. Like I said, another 5 minutes, no glitches, no crashes. I don't know, 50. Boom, alright. Another five minutes, no crashes. We had another fifty. Another five minutes and no crashes. And we're doing fantastic because these cards actually do work really, really well. Now, say you, um, I mean, I don't want to show you guys a crash because that will uh, make my recording software. Uh, not work, so this is why I pre found what the limit were for this card. Um, say you typed in, I don't know, 300 and the, it crashes. It, the drivers will crash, sort themselves out, and it'll uh, go back to default. If it goes black for a couple of minutes, don't worry about it. Just, just leave it, go and get a cup of tea. By the time you come back, it's all sorted and it's gone back to default. So, right, so. So when you get a crash, uh, you want to go back to the last known, um, the last known uh, clock that was stable. There we go. All right. And then what you want to do is go up in fives until you reach another crash. And then when it crashes again, go back ten, and that's your max stable clock for that card. Right. So these were the numbers that I managed to get for this card being stable. So we've got a, a maximum of 240 on the core, 400 on the memory, which is really, really good. So now what I'm going to do is exit out of this. So that it saves. And basically what I'm going to do now is run the benchmarks again and see what FPS difference we get. See how much of an improvement we will get. All right, let's do this. All these are the overclocked benchmarks. So in these benchmarks, we should be seeing improvements to FPS.
uh, here are the results. So we got a overclock on the 1060, 3 gigabyte, core clock of 240, and a memory clock of 400. And we ran all the benchmarks again, and in Valley benchmark, we gained uh, an additional 7.1 FPS. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, we gained 7.16 FPS. In Tomb Raider, we gained 10.3 FPS. In Sleeping Dogs, we gained 3.9 FPS, nearly 4. Uh, but you can use any benchmarks, guys, um, as long as it's got a benchmark mode inside the game, or like any sort of GPU bench. Um, we'll do fine. Um, these are just the games that I had that had benchmarks inside. So, to be honest, the 1063 gigabyte actually did a lot better than what I thought we were going to do. You can actually do near enough 60 FPS gaming on it, which is really, really good for what it costs now. I think I saw one on sale uh, a couple of weeks ago for like £120. So you can actually get these at pretty good prices right now. I have got a lot of other GPUs uh, that I'm going to do this on. I've got the 1070A, the 1080A, 1080Ti. I've also got a, a 1066GB which has 3 gigs more VRAM. Uh, if you guys want any other cards doing, just leave me some comments below. And if you guys achieved uh, less or a little bit more than what I achieved, because like I said, every card is different. It all goes on the... Uh, uh, silicon lottery and all that sort of stuff so comment down below what your what your results were and i'll see you in the next video doesn't it out